welcome and thank all of you for tuning in to today's video. I'm very excited to introduce my friend and colleague, Brandy Padilla. Hi everyone. Hi Don. I'm really glad to be here. Brandy has been our chemical engineer with Kegel for 17 years. Yes, 17. I can't believe it. And you've basically been involved in literally every aspect of any product launch uh, yeah. from creation to really want to hit the market. Yeah, that's correct. When I came on board um, in 2000, uh, the only product that we had in, uh, in our line was the defense line. So I've been here for the development of everything um, from offense forward. Excellent, excellent. And in this segment, you really wanted to touch base on two specific topics, one being viscosity and the other one being surface tension. That's correct. Um, I get a lot of emails and uh, phone calls um, and two of the hot topics that I get are what are viscosity and why are they important? Why is it important? And what is surface tension and what does that mean to me? Uh, I think these questions typically come around because there are numbers that we report uh, in our catalog and on the website about our products, so people just don't know what they mean. Um, so in relation to viscosity, uh, we used to believe that it was very important. And as we've learned more about viscosity and chemicals in general, we've learned that it's just not as important as it used to be. Um, before I get to the why it's not important, I'd like to tell people what viscosity is in case we have some viewers that don't really know. Excellent. Um, so if you'll excuse me for reading, viscosity is defined as a measure of a fluid's resistance to a gradual stress deformation. Um, in rudimentary terms, it's sort of a measure of the internal friction of the fluid against itself. Um, most people commonly think of viscosity in relation to thickness. Honey has a very high viscosity compared to water. So it's an easy visual. Um, viscosity can be measured in a number of different ways. Uh, when I was in college, we actually had an experiment where we measured the viscosity of some different sugar solutions, and we used what's called a YouTube viscometer. Um, I believe you told me several years ago that you guys used um, what's called a Zon cup when you were checking lane conditioners when you used to do lanes by hand. That's correct. When, when we were doing the lanes on not only just the PBA tour, but back then the uh, PWBA tour, um, because we were not manufacturing our own chemicals at that point in time, um, we are using other people's chemicals. We were checking the viscosity from not only batch to batch, but from jug to jug as well. So those two types of viscometers are, are manual measurements. Um, the user, when using a YouTube viscometer, they have to pour the fluid in and use a stopwatch to measure the time it takes for the fluid to travel between two points that are marked on the viscometer. Um, when you used the Zon cup, you know that you filled it up and you had to measure the time it takes right. for the cup to empty. Uh, and then based on some calculations that are specific to the equipment, um, you can calculate the viscosity. So they're not the most accurate of methods because they do require someone to hit start and stop and everybody's reaction time is a little different, but it gets you in the ballpark. So when we measure viscosity now in the lab, the way we check all of our lane conditioners, we use what's called a rotational viscometer. Uh, with this equipment, um, the fluid itself is in a beaker and it's stationary and there's a spindle that is immersed in the fluid and the spindle actually rotates. Um, so in short terms, the spindle measures the friction uh, that is applied to the surface of the spindle from the liquid and the viscometer computes that back and gives us a viscosity number. Um, so it's much more accurate and um, it gives us a very realistic idea of the way the fluid will flow. So I mentioned that this isn't as important as we used to believe it was. Um, back when you guys used to do lanes by hand, uh, typically higher viscosity conditioners would be hookier conditioners and lower Correct. viscosity conditioners would be slicker. So if I put that in relation to two conditioners in our current line of products, Prodigy, which has a viscosity of about 31 centipoise, and ICE, which has a viscosity of about 41 centipoise, based on those numbers, um, ICE would be a hookier conditioner than Prodigy, and we know that's not true. Um, if you put them apples to apples on the lane, uh, ICE is going to be a much slicker conditioner than Prodigy. But viscosity isn't unimportant either. It's still important to know what it is. Uh, if you have a wick machine, for example, um, a higher viscosity conditioner is going to take longer to move up the wicks. Uh, so you might want to use a tank heater to improve the flow, or you might want to even use high flow wicks to improve the flow. You also would probably need to give your lane machine a little longer to recover in between lanes um, so that you have better wicking and better application to the lane. 
Um, also, in regards to sanction technology, you need to know the viscosity so that you can adjust your pressure regulating tubing. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, that's going to really wrap up our show for today. Thank you.